Today I would like to preach the sermon entitled It is only by the grace of God. It is only by the grace of God. Presider uh, read scripture for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. Apostle Paul in today's main text confessed by the grace of God, I am who I am. And he said, I labored, I worked, right? Even more, even harder than all other disciples. Yet not I, but the grace of God with me. This is absolute truth. And this should be our confession today as well. By the grace of God, we are who we are today. And by the grace of God, we came to this place. Amen? As the, as the CK, as the worship leader today said, by the fact that we are here already, here in the, in the Lord's Covenant Church this morning, is that means that we, are, we have a health, right? We are okay to move. We are okay to drive. It is the grace of God. It is the grace, it's the, by the grace of God that we came to this place and we came to the Lord's Covenant Church. Until we enter the kingdom of heaven, the grace of God will guide and protect us. If you are waiting for the second coming, that is the grace of God. And if someone rests in peace before Lord's return, because God's time has, hasn't come, come yet, it is also the grace of God. If your house is doing well, Without a big trouble, it is the grace of God. If your kids behave, listen to the parents well, it is also the grace of God. You may say they behave because parents taught them well. But it is not, right? You know that, right? It is because the grace of God worked in them that they behave and they grow well. And they listen to the parents well. On the other hand, if you are having a sickness and having, have, having a hard time in a hospital, it is also the grace of God. Not only when you are healthy and things go well is the grace of God, but when things don't go well, when you encounter failure, when you have sickness, and when you have pain is also the grace of God. Why? Because through these difficulties, our faith will grow and we will pray harder, right? So it is the grace of God. In the beginning, I said everything is the grace of God. Everything includes the time of happiness and time of sorrow as well. As a pastor, it's not easy to preach that Time of good time and bad time are both the grace of God. It's not easy. Because people want to hear the good part only, right? I'm sure that you want your pastor to bless and proclaim that uh, you will only have the time of blessing, right? You will not have a time of affliction and you will not have a time of suffering. And you will easily say amen to that, right? But the fact... And the truth is, we will encounter good moments and bad moments in our life. If I say, from today onward, you will not see a moment of uh, discomfort in your life, but always, every second will be a moment of happiness, I probably uh, will become a liar then. But if I say, even if you encounter the moment of discomfort, you will be able to overcome it by the grace of God. I think I'm telling you the truth, right? So today, even if, even though it's a bit difficult and not comfortable with me uh, to say uh, the time of sickness, time of suffering is also the uh, uh, grace of God, I uh, want to boldly proclaim that it is the grace of God. 
Because God may ask me later, why didn't you preach about that? So I'm afraid of that time, so I will tell you the truth. If you are dying in sickness and have no hope for life, Senior Pastor Reverend Abraham Park said, it is still the grace of God. It is still the grace of God. Why? Through the sickness and pain, you will realize the sins that you committed before in, in the past, and you will repent of not believing in Jesus well enough, and it will remind you about the grace of God. Therefore, even if we are in a great difficult, difficulty, uh, it is still the grace of God. And therefore, everything, everything is the grace of God. As you know, uh, Senior Pastor Abraham Park lived uh, 80 over years, and his final realization, he said, was the grace of God. His final realization was the grace of God. Ah, when things go well, and when things don't go well, always the grace of God has been working for me. That is what he understood at last, he said. Not only senior pastor in the Bible, I mean, not only senior pastor, but in the Bible, uh, sorry, uh, there is another figure, right, who was filled with the grace of God until the moment of his death. Who is this person apart from Jesus Christ? <laughs> Deacon Stephen, right? Deacon Stephen. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. Right? The deacon Stephen was the person who is filled, who is full of grace. Acts chapter 6, verse 15. And fixing their gaze on him, all who were sitting in the council saw his face like the face of an angel. The face of Stephen was like the face of an angel. Stephen is the person who is filled with, his, with, with the grace of God and who is full of God's grace. This grace-filled deacon Stephen faced persecution, as you know, and martyred. People stoned him to death. I cannot imagine how painful it might be, how scary he uh, would be, and how terrifying it could be. I don't know what I would do if I were him. If someone right now punches me, hopefully not, and, 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 and breaks my bone, I don't know whether I'll be able to remain calm and say, I forgive you, brother. I forgive you, sister. Honestly, I'm not confident enough to behave like this. But Deacon Stephen, whereas, was not only filled with the faith, but he also was filled with the grace and love. Let's read Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 60. Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 60. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and have rushed upon him with one in purse. And they, uh, when they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they went on stoning Stephen as he called upon the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Up until the moment of his death, Stephen 
was filled with God's grace and God's love. God's love signifies forgiveness, right? Love and forgiving, forgiveness go, go together, goes together. It cannot be separated. If you have a love of God, means you are the man of forgiving. Because of the love of God, we are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven, right? So when you say, yes, pastor, I'm the man of God's love, I am, I am filled with God's love, means you are not loved by God, but you are the man of forgiving. Yes, I am willing to forgive others who sin against me, who hurt my heart, who insert me. Look at Stephen. Why he was being stoned. It was not before he was stoned, right? Why he was stoning, being stoned. Means he, he, he was being hit, right? By these stones. Yet he was uh, offering his forgiveness, right? Lord, do not hold this sin against them. So Stephen is the person who uh, was filled with the grace of God. And up, up, until, the, up until the moment of the, his death, he uh, didn't lose God's grace in his life. One thing important here is it says uh, a young man named Saul witnessed about Stephan's death, right? Stephan's martyr. Who is this man, Saul? Later, he is called Paul. Yes, as you all know. This Saul is Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 13, verse 9 Acts chapter 13, verse 9, it says, But Saul, who was also known Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, fixed his gaze upon him. Uh, if, uh, the earlier part of uh, the book of Apost the, the Acts, uh, Apostle Paul was described and named as Saul, but then later part, he was called Paul. So Saul is Paul. Is this uh, the uh, two different names for one person. So Apostle Paul was there. Of, of course, at that time, he was, not, he was not Apostle yet, right? He was the persecutor of Jesus Christ and the followers of Jesus Christ. And, the, and, the, and the he witnessed of the death, martyr of Stephen. And this young soul was shocked when he witnessed Deacon Stephen being filled with the faith, grace, and love until up until the moment of his death. So later, when he became an apostle, he became an ambassador of peace. He became an ambassador of peace. Apostle Paul became an ambassador of peace. In the early church's period, <laughs> we think that the early church period, the first church in the history, they have no they had no trouble and everything was so perfect for them, right? But actually, it was not like that. They had many trouble. They, the ch church was filled with this many troubles. And Apostle Paul uh, went there, was sent there, right, to resolve issues, or write, write letters to resolve issues, resolve troubles. Apostle Paul became an ambassador of peace. Wherever he goes and wherever ever he writes the letter to, there, there comes a peace. There comes a reconciliation. There comes a, solu a, re a resolution. Firstly, Apostle Paul taught them the faith of Jesus. Faith of Jesus. And the secondly, Apostle Paul taught them the grace and love of Jesus Christ. Grace and love of Jesus Christ. As I say, because Apostle Paul had a faith, grace, and love, wherever he went and wherever he rode to, there appeared peace and reconciliation. Peace and reconciliation. Today, I believe that God gave and pulled out his grace and love to all of us. Amen? 
Do I, did I hear amen? amen? Amen. So I pray that wherever you go, may there be peace, and may there be reconciliation, and may you become an ambassador of God's love and grace. Amen? Yes. yes. Wherever you go, wherever you work, right? May there be God's love and God's grace appear. God's peace appear. God's reconciliation, God's resolution appear in that place. Then what is the purpose of infilling us with God's grace? What is the purpose of infilling us with God's grace? No matter how nice person you are and we are, if we don't receive God's grace, complain and grumble ought to come out from our mouth. When we don't have grace, we read people's faith. We became scared of people rather than God. There is no happiness in working. We getting tired in serving. We do, we do things artificially and superficially. When we don't have grace, when the word of encouragement or advice given by a pastor or an elder or an elderess, we think, who are you to give me an advice? Mind your own business, right? I am far better than you. I'm not saying this is what you say. This is what uh, we say when we don't receive God's grace. This is what uh, people will say uh, when they do not receive God's grace. However, when we receive grace of God, all things will be resolved. Why? Because Jesus will come to our heart and start it working in us. No matter what kind of difficulties and hardship you have in your family or in your business, the grace of God will heal. The grace of God will comfort. And the grace of God will help. Amen? Amen. Last night, I had a, a moment of a, a sharing of God's grace with some of the congregation. When the trouble come, came to our life, we thought that was unsolvable, right? And that was what we said last, last night. It was just too difficult to tackle it. And we never had, we never uh, saw, we never had experience of this kind of trouble before. So we, don't, we didn't know what to do. But at the end of it, we saw that God worked. The grace of God worked. And, and things changed. And the, 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 the gate, is op, op, gate is open. And the and, 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 and situation was changed and so. So when we receive the grace of God, the grace of God will solve the situation. Grace of God will heal the, the wound of the people. And the grace of God will comfort you. And the grace of God will help uh, you to do uh, and, 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 and live according to the word of God. Amen? Then what is the purpose of giving us God's grace? What is the purpose of giving us God's grace? One purpose is there. It is to ask us to do God's work. It is to ask us to do God's work. Why God gives His grace upon us? Because He wants us to do God's work, His work. God is ordering to do His work for the will of God today and right now. Why has God sent you and me to this world? Because God wants us to do His work. As the worship leader said today, this morning, it has been four years since the Lord's Covenant Church officially started. There must be time of happiness and time of pain, time of joy and time of sorrow. However, none of us was put into a situation like being stoned to death like Deacon Stephen. Then let's confess that our last four years 
were the grace of God. And all things we have done is by the grace of God. Amen? Can we really say and can we really confess the last four years were the grace of God? Amen. Let's not say, I have given this much offering to God. I have spent this much time to serve in this church. I have brought such, thing, uh, such many people to God. And I have offered this and that to God. Please do not show yourself. Do not boast about yourself. I think our worship leader today and our uh, represent prayer today read my sermon not already. <laughs> they uh, spoke. What I need to speak already. Do not boast about yourself. Let's not boast our, about ourselves. But Apostle Paul said what? Apostle Paul confessed that it is not me, but the grace of God with me has done all this. If anything, right? If you have done any good work for this church, if you have done any good serve, serving in this church, Let's say, let's confess that it is all done by the grace of God. It's not me. Amen. So let's pray like this from today onward. Father, may the grace of God forcefully move me to the place of receiving grace. And the time of receiving grace. So that not I, but the grace of God impels me pushes me and forcefully makes me do God's work in the grace of God. Amen. If we confess like that, I believe God will be so happy with our confession and God will open up new way and many new works for us and new highway for us, right? You know, there is a difference between highway and just a street, right? Highway, like the uh, sprint highway here, right? You go faster, right? There is no hindrances. That's the highway. If God opens the highway for you, then there will be no hindrance. Whatever you do will go well, and there will, whatever you do, in whatever you do, there will be a success. It's not just a street. It's not just a road, right? Of course, road and street is also good if it's open to us, right? But if God says, I will open highway for you, why don't we ask for it, right? Why don't we believe God will open highway for us? Jesus bound himself to Father's work in his entire life. Jesus bound himself to Father's work in his entire life. John chapter 5, verse 17. John chapter 5, verse 17, he says, But he answered them, My father is working now, until now, and I myself am working. See, even Jesus himself, on, when he was on the earth, right, he bound himself, he committed himself, right, into God's work, to do God's work. Nothing else. His only focus was to do God's work, on, to do Father's work. Therefore, we should do God's work more with the grace of God in coming years. We have done greatly and so much, and I'm really grateful for all of you who've been serving well in this church last four years. But that is all done by the grace of God, right? And the fifth year is begun. Now we need, what, we need, what, we, what we need to do is we should focus on Father's work and we should do God's work even more and even greater, right, in the coming years. So I pray that may the Lord's Covenant Church become the church filled with the grace of God and does the will of God and the work of God with all our heart and mind. Amen. Conclusion today. There is no sale on credit in regard to the works done by the grace of God. 
Do you know this expression, sale on credit? Sale on credit is opposite to sale on cash. Sale on cash, if you sell things, you will get immediate uh, result, right? Cash in your hand. Sale on credit is they promise, I will pay you later, right? The, 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 the works done by the grace of God, the grace of God is not sale on credit. Which means, if we do things by the grace of God, there always comes absolute reward. Absolute reward. If we do things by the grace of God, God will bring His reward to us. Absolutely. Certainly. If your house is filled with the grace of God, God will take care of your house until the end. God will take care of your house until the end. Do you want your house to be filled with the grace of God? Amen. I do, I do. Let's read Psalm 34, verse 7. Psalm 34, verse 7. It says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. See? God will send his angel and, 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 and the angel uh, will encamp around us and he, they will rescue us. God will rescue us. Our house, if our house is filled with the grace of God, then God will take care of our house until the end. Your husband, your relatives, your mother, your father, your children, your grandchildren, right? Also, if we do God's work by the grace of God, the reward is not ambiguous, but it is immediate and it is certain. That is why the grace of God is not like say it on credit, but say it on catch. Our reward will be sure and certain. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. The reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. The reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. See? God will give us riches, honor, and life if we are filled with the grace of God. So don't think lightly about putting energy, putting time for the work of God. Don't think casually or uh, 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 lightly about uh, investing your time and, and, and energy to serve God. Because we do work for God by the grace of God. Uh, the Bible says riches, honor, and life will be given and will be added to you uh, when we do God's work by the grace of God. So do you believe that God will give you uh, uh, riches, honor, and life when you do God's work? Amen. Amen. I believe our fifth year will be the time that we will receive God's riches, God's honor, and God's life into our house and into our church. Amen? Amen. So please do more of God's work when you are fit and when you are healthy. Senior Pastor Reverend Abraham Park often gave us this illustration, which is from, which is the example from uh, his real experience. The one female congregation came to the church and received God's grace, right? But she said, I will uh, start working for God, I will work for God when my children is grown up. Then when her children grew up, she said, I will work for God when my children get married, right? Then when her children get married, she said, I will work for God when my grandchildren is grown up, right? And so on and so on. And later, when she became very old and weak, 
she came to senior pastor and confessed regretfully that she should have studied working for God when she met God and when she received grace of God first. This is a real story. This is one of our congregation confessed to senior pastor. So please do not think that you can serve God later in your life. <laughs> do not think that, oh, next year I may start serving God, right? God is, as I said in the beginning, today, right now, God is ordering you, God is commanding you to do God's work. Not tomorrow, not next week, today, right now. God is asking you to determine and to decide to do God's work, to become willing uh, to do God's work uh, right now, at this moment. So please serve God first and do God's work first. Then things around you may be settled by the help of God. Amen. Amen. Lastly, uh, this is actually uh, the, the, what senior pastor preached about 2007. And in his sermon, he said, the most important work of God. What is the most important work of God? There may be a lot of different works of God, right? Evangelism could be one. Delivering the word of God is another one, right? But what is the most important work of God? You say two. Who said two, right? <laughs> and there is an answer. Yes, prayer. Senior Paul said prayer is the most important work of God. We need to do. It's the most important work of God that we need to do. Praying for your kid is far better than giving them a million dollars. Of course, as a kid, you per perhaps prefer to receive a million dollars, right? From your parents. But I'm telling you, as senior pastor told us, uh, according to the, the word of God, I'm telling you, by faith and according to the word of God, your parents praying for you is far better than you receive a million dollars from your parents. Praying for each other is far better than feeding, feeding one, one, one another once or twice. So we should, if you want to do God's work, then I think we should start from praying. Praying for each other. Praying for each other. Although we do pray, and the, every Sunday, every Lord's Day, on, in, during the announcement time, there is a prayer request being uh, spoken, right? Being announced. But honestly, do not tell me, right? But honestly, think of yourself and how uh, much do you pray for your brothers and sisters? How much do you pray for your church? How much? So, uh, Maybe next, next Lord's Day, I would like to have this uh, prayer system, prayer, praying system. Like that there is a part with all congregation's name and those who are attending regularly uh, in, the, in, the part, in the box. And each will pick up one paper. And you should pray for that person for about a month's time. And every month we pick up the new name and pray, uh, dedicate to pray for that person uh, at least a month. Then if it becomes about a year, you uh, will have a chance to pray for at least 12 people of this congregation. I think, I think we, we need to start with a prayer. Without prayer, nothing works. Uh, without prayer, nothing works. And uh, of course we should pray for the redemptive history uh, seminars and everything else, but I think we should pray for each other as well. We should pray for newcomer. We should pray for kids. If you, if you pick up a name of kids, then for a month, you just pray for them. Let them grow well. Let them study well, right? Let them behave. 
Let them really grow in the word of God. And if you uh, pick up a name uh, of, a, of a businessman or businesswoman, you pray for their business. Let them, let them meet the uh, good clients, the right person, and invest money in the right timing and to the, to the right point, to the right project. I need to discuss with the elders and the staff team how to proceed, but I think perhaps next Lord's Day we will have this uh, box of, uh, filled with the names Paper, papers of name and we can pick up one and should start praying for that person and uh, we can keep doing it and, and I think you will be uh, you will find the reward you will find the uh, immediate reward when you pray for that person and when you are being prayed by that person Amen so let's if we are really if we really want to do God's work from this year onward Let's pray for each other. Let's pray. Going back to main theme today, please remember, our Father is working until now. Therefore, we should work for Him and we should work even more for Him. In order to do that, we need to receive and be filled with the grace of God and the love of God. That is the first so let's pray. Let's pray to God. Let's pray to Father that uh, allow us to be filled with the grace of God and, 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 and pour out His grace upon us so that our church, all the members of our church, may be filled with the grace of God and the love of God. And by that, we can do God's work. And when we do God's work, may uh, God be pleased by the Lord's covenant church. And may God bring His reward upon your business, upon your family, and upon your uh, church, and upon your country. Amen.